The heavenly protectoress and patroness of Belarus, Saint Yevrosini of Polotsk, is the first East Slavonic woman to have been canonized by the Orthodox Church and the only saint recognized by all the Christian denominations. With the power of her faith, goodness and wisdom, she contributed to establishing peace in Slavonic lands. In her native Polish lands, she promoted education and the Christian spiritual lifestyle. Being a political and commercial center between Eastern and Western Europe, Polotsk wielded all the prerequisites for the birth of such a unique personality that St. Yevrosini was and will remain. Surrounded by the eminent craftsman, the architect Ioan, the jeweler Lazar Bogsha, inspiring her contemporaries to do good deeds, Yevrosini was the first woman to found a convent to build a temple, to elaborate for it a unique iconographic painting program, to order a world-famous exaltation cross for the temple, to obtain the miracle-working icon of Our Lady of Ephesus, painted by St. Luke the Evangelist. Several centuries after the end of her earthly life in the Holy Land, through the efforts of believers, the Venerable St. Yevrosini found eternal peace in her Polit's cloister, having united Constantinople, Jerusalem, Kiev, and Polotsk with material and spiritual ties. In ancient times, Polotsk was among the most important European towns. In his story of the passing years, the Venerable Nestor wrote, The Dorina flows into the Varangian Sea, so, from Rus, one can sail down the Davina to the land of the Varangians, and from the Varangians up to Rome. It is therefore easy to conjecture that the brisk ties between Pollux and other countries contributed to the spread of Christianity in the Pollux Principality long before the official adoption of Christianity in Rus. In the 11th to 12th centuries, thanks to the adoption of Christianity, and the spread of written language. Benefited by the Byzantine culture and the impact of West European culture, the lands of the present-day Belarus entered the stage of the European history. It is not fortuitous that, on one of the most ancient maps in the world, the 13th century Epstopher map, the medieval Rus was represented by Polotsk, along with Kiev and Novgorod. Majestic temples of St. Sophia that were raised in the major centers of Old Ruslands, in Kiev, Novgorod and Polotsk, not only proudly competed with each other in terms of their name and dimensions, but they could also rival the salubrious temple of St. Sophia of Constantinople, erected by the Byzantine Emperor Justinian in the 6th century. The close kinship with the Byzantine Imperial House the daughter of Pollux, Prince Vasislav Bratislavich, married Emperor Alexius Komnenos, helped in inviting skilled building crews to Pollux. Byzantine craftsmasters participated most extensively in building temples, with their walls depicting biblical scenes, in founding monasteries that housed scriptoria for translating books from Greek into Church Slavonic, for copying and artistic styling of books. The great-great-granddaughter of Prince Vladimir of Kiev, Princess Yevrosini, was born in around 1102 to the family of Pollock's Prince Georgi and Princess Sophia in Pollock's land, at the banks of the river Western Davina. In those times, the river served as a route from the Northmen to the Greeks and was a major fluvial artery of Eastern Europe, bringing together the cultures of the Catholic Orthodox, pagan rites, and the Arab world. Thanks to a strong economic, political, and cultural impact of the Latinate West, Pollux soon entered the group of advanced lands and felt, earlier than others, the striving to independence. That striving 
was maintained by the activities of Pollock's princes Bratislav Itzislavic, 1001 to 1044, and the grandfather of Saint Yevrosini of Pollock, Vasislav Bratislavic, 1044 to 1101. It is precisely by the efforts of Vasislav that the first stonewalled temple in Belarus, the Saint Sophia Cathedral, was built in the town centre in the Upper Castle Hill in the mid 11th century. The cathedral became a symbol of political independence of the Polish Principality, of its economic might and great cultural importance. The cathedral was the setting for the most prominent events in the Polish Principality. Enthronement of princes, receiving of foreign ambassadors, declarations of war and peace. It had Archbishop's Cathedral, it was used for the storing of the state treasury and the books of the library founded by Prince Isislav died in 1001. And it was there that the manuscripts were being written and copies of books were being made. The cathedral was first mentioned in the Lay of Igor's Warfare, 12th century, and the life of St. Yevrosini of Polotsk, 12th century. The St. Sophia Cathedral where Yefrosini received her monastic tonsure, embarked her on enlightenment activities and spiritual feet, inspired her to create one of the first convents in Rus, and to build on its territory the Saviour Transfiguration Cathedral, a genuine masterpiece of the outstanding Pollock School of Architecture. During the 12th century, Polotsk was among Rus's main centres of monumental architecture. It is precisely there that a special architectural design of the temple was developed. Its tower-like configuration and three paddle facades accentuated the verticality of the spatial structure of the building. The traditions of Polotsk's architecture had a strong impact on the art of building in stone in Smolensk, Novgorod, Grodno, Chernigov, and Vitebsk. When St. Euphrosini was living, the Saviour Transfiguration Cathedral was adorned with frescoes, which fully survive to the present day. In terms of their survival rate, an array of frescoes in the Saviour Transfiguration Church is an absolutely unique feature of the cultural heritage of the Kievan Rus. In around 1155, not far from the Saviour Cloister, the Hugumenus Yevrosini erected the Church of the Blessed Mother of God and, attached to the church, established a men's monastery. She wanted to have there a wonder-working icon of the Mother of God, one of those that had been painted by the Apostle and Evangelist Luke, namely, the icon from the Greek town of Ephesus. The Venerable Yevrosini sent her servant Michael to Constantinople with plentiful gifts for Emperor Manuel Komnenos I and Patriarch Luke to ask them to let her bring the wonder-working icon to Polotsk. Both the Emperor and the Patriarch benevolently accommodated the request of the Venerable. Constantinople was aware of her spiritual feats, great erudition and profound faith. To satisfy the spiritual requests of the Venerable, the Emperor charged a detachment of warriors to go to Ephesus and fetch the icon. A hearty welcome accorded to the convent envoy Michael by the Byzantine Emperor and the Patriarch is indicative of the truly high level of his mission. It is most likely that at the same time, not without good assistance from the top-ranking ecclesiastical authorities of Constantinople, Pollux was donated with invaluable relics, particles of the holy tree with a drop of Christ's blood, particles of the holy sepulchre and the sepulchre of the mother of God, particles of the relics of the proto-martyrs Stephen and Pantaleon, and blood of Saint Demetrius of Thessalonica. It is these relics that were inserted in the altar cross, made in 1611 by the jeweler Lazar Bogshar, on the orders of the Hegumenus Yevrosini. It was a six-pointed cross, 52 centimeters high. The base of the cross 
was made from cypress wood and was coated by 22 golden and 20 gilt silver plates decorated with elaborate ornament, precious stones and pearls, and 20 small enamel icons. Lazar Bogshar was well familiar with the ancient Byzantine plicature techniques. His miniatures were not inferior to the best products of the Byzantine enamelers art. The great artistic mastery displayed in making the cross, its enormous cost equal to the revenues of a whole district. Compactness of its iconographic design testify to the high spiritual importance that was attached to the exaltation cross by the church community of Politsk. The cross was also a monument of old Slavonic written language. A brief inscription on the reverse of the artifact informed of the name of this relic's maker. O Lord, help thy servant Lazar, surnamed Bogsha, who made this cross of Saint Saviour and Yevrosini. The lateral sides of the cross contained an inscription, personal testament of the venerable Yevrosini. May it never leave the convent, may it never be sold or given away. Should whoever disobeys and takes it away from the convent, may this holy cross never help him either in the ongoing age or in the age to come. However, despite this strict admonition, the cross had a very tragic fate. At the beginning of 1941, the cross vanished without leaving a trace. The attempts to ascertain its whereabouts continue. The cloisters, founded by the venerable Yevrosini turned, even in her lifetime, into the greatest spiritual, cultural and charity centres in Politsk land and elsewhere in Rus. Schools, libraries, hotels, asylums for the poor, icon painting and jewellers workshops were organised within them. After having completed all the arrangements, both internal and external, at her convent, the venerable Yevrosini, in her declining years already, decided to fulfill her long-lasting wish to visit the Holy Land. Presaging her approaching death, the Saint Hygromenus aspired to visit the places related to the earthly life of Christ the Saviour to end her earthly path there. Yevrosini arrived in the city of Christ's suffering at the end of April 1173. The Venerable sent her servant Michael with the gifts to the Patriarch of Jerusalem to ask him to open for her the gate through which Christ entered Jerusalem. Although it had been done only in exceptional cases, the Patriarch agreed and Yevrosini entered Jerusalem through the Christ gate. On her first day in the Holy City, she went to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. On the third day, having bowed to the life-bearing Holy Sepulchre and finished her prayer, the Venerable returned to the Russian Monastery of the Most Holy Mother of God. There she shortly fell ill. Many years' feats of fasting, toil and sorrows could not but weaken her body's strength. She was in her seventies. The difficult journey to Jerusalem, which took almost four months, also weakened her health. The author of the life of St. Yevrosini makes it known that after 24 days of her illness, the Venerable received the last sacrament and quitted this world. In this way, the remarkable life of the first Russian saint came to an end. At the will of the descendant, her body was buried by her accompanying relatives at the monastery of Theodosius the Great. Since then, on her deceased day, on the 23rd of May, or the 5th June in the new style, an annual Requiem Mass is sung for the repose of her soul. The relics of the Venerable Yevrosini did not remain in Jerusalem for a long time. On October 3rd, 1187, Jerusalem was captured by the Egyptian Sultan Saladin, who demanded that, within five days and after redeeming their lives, the Christians should leave the city. 
Returning to their homeland, the monks of the Russian monastery took the holy relics of the Pollitz princess with them, wishing to transfer them to Pollitz. It might be that the relics reached Turov, but due to the animosity between the Pollitz and Kiev princes, it was impossible to carry them farther. For this reason, the remains of the holy God-pleaser were brought to Kiev and laid in the remote caves of the Kiev Lorda of the Caves. Therefore, the Venerable Yevrosini was the first Russian holy wife to be buried in the great Kiev monastery. For 700 years, the Orthodox believers were remembering and fondly venerating their saint, despite all the religious and historical vicissitudes. On the 22nd of April, 1910, on the third day of the Holy Easter, after the Divine Liturgy, the relics of the saint were taken from the old coffin and laid into a new cypress wood shrine. Then the relics of Saint Yevrosini were delivered with great honours from Kiev to Polotsk. Thus, after a long-lasting journey, the Venerable Yevrosini returned to the convent she had founded. The masterpieces of architecture, painting and ornamental arts, in whose creation St. Yevrosini of Pollux was involved, have turned into the tangible assets of the spiritual heritage of the Enlightener herself and have exerted an essential impact on the spiritual and cultural development of other countries and nations. <laughs>